Hello guys, Charles here and welcome back to my channel. So today I want to talk about a seemingly very simple and very common chord movement which is getting us from the major 1 chord to the minor 6 chord. So in the key of C that would be going from a C major chord to an A minor chord. Now on face value this is a really simple movement and even once we dig into it a bit deeper it's not a hugely complicated thing but it is something that we need to be really confident with and there's a few things that can trip us up when tackling this movement. So that's what we're gonna be covering in this video. So like I say, on face value, going from a one chord to a six chord, it's pretty simple. So in the key of C, we'll do all examples in the key of C today. In the key of C, that would be taking us from a C chord of some type to an A minor chord of some type. Now, most commonly, we're probably gonna be going from a C major seven chord to an A minor seven chord. The reason that's so simple to get from a C chord to an A minor chord is that they are the same scale. Both of those will take C major, no problem at all. So if I play a C chord, that will accept a C major scale. If I play an A minor chord, that will also accept a C major scale. However, when we actually see this progression in context, there's very often a passing chord, and it's that passing chord that can cause us a bit of bother. So I decided to talk about this this week because I was playing I Wish I Knew How It Would Feel To Be Free, which again, if we were to do it in the key of C, would be a C chord. Then very often the passing chord has a descending walking bass line. So the bass line would be C, B, B, A. So that would be a C. And that B is a seven chord in its second inversion. So what it really is, it's the five chord of the six. So in this case, six is A minor, the five chord of A minor is E7. So we've got C, E7 to A minor. And that gives us that really nice gospel -y sound. So that's one obstacle that we occasionally see when getting from a one chord to a six chord. The other obstacle we might see is that fully extended into a two five. So we might have something like this. Which is of course uh, Yesterday by the Beatles. So what we've got there is the C chord some sort of B minor. Now the melody of yesterday really implies a B minor seven, but I like to play it as a half diminished still. So B minor seven flat five. So some sort of E seven, again, probably with a flat nine. That sort of sound, taking us to the A minor. So there's so many other ways we can get harmonically from the one chord to the six chord. But let's just stick with those for today so we don't get too carried away. So those two examples were I wish I knew how it would feel to be free and Yesterday by the Beatles, both of which I think are in the sixth edition of the real book, the current edition. So there's quite a few ways that we can tackle soloing over this chord movement. Now I'll, I'll do these in a, as close to an order of importance as I can, but of course what works for me and what works for you is going to be completely different. But Definitely the most important one, which is so often overlooked, and I always forget to say this in videos as well. I always get straight to the theory stuff and forget to say the most important thing. How to play over any chord progression, in this case we happen to be talking about a one to a six. It shouldn't be tricky because we should have so much musical vocabulary in our head that tackles that chord progression. Now where do we get that vocabulary from in the first place? Well, we get it from the real book and the, the jazz canon as a whole. Any tune you know that goes from a one chord to a six chord, however it gets there, you can just pinch those ideas and elaborate on them just gently. So let's say we were doing, I wish I knew how it would feel to be free. The melody there is. Okay, so that's what we've got at that point. So I could use that in any tune or some very simply disguised variation of it. I could have one, two, three, four. Something simple like that. 
Or that. I'm just mucking around with the notes that the tune gave me and using those, it's like a safety jacket. You can't really go too far wrong. Or in yesterday, what does the melody do in yesterday? Well, the melody to yesterday, again, we're doing all these in the key of C, goes like this. So that's just a scalar line there, and it's outlining, it looks like a kind of E major scale. Until we get to the top there and we've got C natural. So what this is, it's the fifth mode of the melodic minor scale. So in that instance, we're just playing A melodic minor as a scale. So you can easily pinch a scale without sounding like you've nicked it from yesterday. No matter what the chord progression itself was, as long as it's going from a one chord to a six chord, it doesn't really matter what the middle chords are. It's the function's the important thing and it's where it's getting us to. So that's the first approach and it should always be your go-to approach for any chord progression, no matter how easy or difficult it is, is to pinch ideas from the tune and just decorate what you were already given. This is the Peter Bernstein approach. You can't go too far wrong and you're likely to play a far more musical solo if you're taking ideas from the melody itself rather than just trying to come up with everything fresh off the top of your head. So the next approach to get from a one chord to a six chord is to use descending scalar motifs. So just like the bass line went descending from the root of the one chord to the root of the six chord, we can do the same on all of the chord degrees. Let's have a little look. So I can just go from C, and that's got me to A. And I can decorate that as well. That's a really nice and easy approach. I can do that on any of the chord degrees. So I can go from E, and that's gonna get me from the third of the C chord to the third of the A chord. What about the G? Easy. Nice and simple. However, if I try and go from the seventh degree of C, which is B, to the seventh degree of A, which is G, it doesn't really work. It kind of does. With some context. Mm, doesn't really work. Now, why is that? This C chord and this A minor chord are both the same chord. That's why this is on face value quite a simple chord progression. This is a C6 to an A minor 7, which are just an inversion or what I like to call a rotation of one another. All those chords I've just played there were either C6 or A minor 7, depending on how you want to interpret those. If you want to know how I was coming up with all those voicings, then check out my chord rotations video where I break down how to make any chord loads and loads of different voicings, so you can check out how I did that, but that's for another time. So when we think of this as a C6 chord, we wouldn't want to do a descending line from the seventh degree, we'd want to do a descending line from the sixth degree because we're going from chord tone to chord tone. So the descending line from the root sounds great. From the third sounds great. From the fifth sounds great. From the sixth, Well, that still doesn't really work, does it? So again, I'll, I'll put that into context, that one, so we can hear it doesn't really work. See, it doesn't resolve. It doesn't resolve when we go to the F. So this brings us to our final approach. So just to summarize that second approach, from the root, the third, and the fifth of the C chord, we can just descend as the bass line does in I Wish I Knew How It Feel To Be Free. We can take that same approach from the root, the third, and the fifth, and just decorate them slightly using any tricks that you like to use. However, it doesn't really work from the sixth or the seventh, and this is the reason why. 
So the reason this doesn't really work is the same reason why we need a harmonic minor scale and a melodic minor scale. Although when we get to six, we treat it as a natural minor or C major. To get there, we needed to use an E7 chord. Now the E7 chord has a G sharp in it, but the A minor chord that that E7 takes us to has a G natural in it. So we need a scale that has both a G natural and a G sharp in it. Now, as you've seen on this channel, we've discussed this scale a lot before. It's called the bebop scale. This is where the bebop scale really comes in handy, is when we're moving from tonality to tonality in the same key center. So now if I take that same approach I was just doing descending from the sixth degree, it's now gonna work. With the context. That line now works because I've got that flat six is what we really like to think of it as, a G sharp, or in the context of C, we'd think of it as an A flat, or at least I personally would. And that now works. So to get from the major tonality to the minor tonality, we need to use bebop scale ideas. So there's a few simple ways of doing this. On the C, we could just descend through a normal C major scale. And then when we get to the E7 chord, we then start using the bebop scale. So I could have one, that's one bar of C. Then if the E7 came here, and then I'm gonna have to do a little encirclement to get me back to the note C, which is one of our chord degrees. takes me really nicely from that got me from my C major sound to my A minor sound at the end there. I might want to include that bebop note on the C chord as well. So I could just have, there it is. Here, that one there demonstrates the whole point of the bebop. I didn't need to resolve at the end. It automatically did it for me. I got nicely to my C note because I used the bebop notes in both octaves. For the first example, I didn't use the note in the first octave. And I did in the second octave, which meant I was one note short that C at the end there. So the point I'm trying to highlight here is that you need to work on your bebop scale and thinking of it as two separate tonalities, two separate chords. This is just the six diminished ideas that we've talked about before on the channel. So we need to practice playing the six part moving to the diminished part. So if we forget the chord progression for a second, we're just gonna practice the bebop scale, thinking of it as two units, a six chord and a diminished chord. So we could play around with six ideas. Now that doesn't mean we don't use any of the other notes, but we just try our best to focus on the C6 outline. And then we move to a diminished idea at some point, maybe once every bar. That sort of idea and just practicing moving from a major scale, major six pentatonic basically sound world into a diminished sound world is a really, really, really important movement because it applies not only to the one chord to the six chord, but loads and loads of other movements as well. Now, the final thing I want to say about that is diminished is a vague concept anyway. It doesn't really have a key center, it doesn't have a home, it doesn't have an obvious root because it's symmetrical. So we need to think about the context while we're practicing this. So if we go back to thinking about our chord progression now, we're going from a one chord to a six chord via the E7 in this instance. So when we're practicing this as a six chord going to a diminished chord, 
we need to make sure that we're aware of what the root of that diminished is as well. So we could practice our C6. Now when I get to my diminished ideas, I might want to be adding E's into there so that I'm highlighting the fact that I know that's the root. So that was just me thinking diminished arpeggio but adding the E in as a root. Now that gives me an E7 flat 9 sound. The other one of those that I definitely want to practice is the diminished side of the scale but adding the G into it because that is the dominant chord of C. So E is a really important one because that takes us to the relative minor and G is a very important one because it takes us back to the one chord. So again there, I'm just playing really slowly, bar of C6 ideas, a bar of the diminished sound, but that instance I was adding the note G into that diminished structure as well. So there you have it, that's all I wanted to discuss today. We've got a few different approaches of getting from a one chord to a six chord, usually via some sort of dominant structure. The approaches we've outlined today, the most important one, forget all the bebop stuff, that's fun if you can get your brain around it, but it's not essential. The most essential one is learning loads of melodies from the real book that tackle this movement or a similar movement and pinching those ideas basically, decorating them slightly, varying them slightly, but using those as your vocabulary. And then you don't need to be worrying about scales and chords and all this stuff as you play. The second idea we covered was just simply descending from the root, the third and the fifth, one note through the scale down towards the first, the third and the fifth of the sixth chord. By decorating those slightly, we can create interesting descending lines, but not really worrying about whether we're going to get where we're going or not, because it's such a small movement that we're almost guaranteed to get there. And that final approach, which is when you want to really start to outline the changes rather than just descending through melodic ideas, a slightly more bebop approach, I suppose, is to use the bebop scale. But think of it the Barry Harris way, which is the sixth chord and the diminished chord. The bebop scale, thinking of it as those two chords overlaid upon one another to create an eight note scale. But it's really a C6 or a one six chord to a diminished chord built on the two, the four, the flat six, or the major seven, whichever way you want to think about that. As you play that diminished chord, make sure you're either aware mentally or actually playing the root, definitely the fifth of the major key and definitely the fifth of the minor key, but also make sure you're practicing the tritones of both of those. And that's giving you your family of four ideas. Let me know down below in the comments where else you see this chord progression one to a six. It's really, really frequent, pops up all the time. So let me know which tunes you'll be practicing it in. If you did find this video useful, then please do give it a like, subscribe, ding that notification bell, and share with any of your friends who might also benefit from this information. And as always, I hope you're all doing very well, getting plenty of practice in, and I very much look forward to seeing you in the next one. Cheers. Forget a Jeff Jeff for drowning in debt now. You can't buy your way out. And I had to find it difficult to